listening to the distinguished leader of the opposition and political leader of the United National Congress, Mrs. Kamla Passad Bissessa. <laughs> members of Parliament, councillors, the executive members of the UNC, and most importantly, you, the UNC family in the house. Pleasant good evening. General and Tobago, pleasant good evening. First, I must thank Mrs. Passad Bissessa for granting me the opportunity to address some of the critical issues pertaining to national security on this platform. But please allow me a moment to introduce myself. My name is Carlton Denny. I was born in Point Ligu, a small village on the peripheral of the borough of Point Fortin. I enlisted in the Trinidad and Tobago Regiment in 1981, where I served 16 years, many of which was in the Special Forces. I was invited to join the Security Intelligence Agency in 1997 because of my vast knowledge in electronics and communication technologies. I joined the SSA and served this country in the capacity of the Director of Intelligence. Opuchi, after this Rowley PNM fired the legitimate Director of the SSA in 2015 and replaced him with the illegal entering Director, I am the person that they asked to fire all the East Indians in the SSA, and I told them, no, I am not doing that. This made the daily newspapers. I reminded Keith Rowley and the then Minister of National Security, Dylan, that in this country, every creed and race was fine and equal place. I told them, no, I am not buying East Indians. When we vote, when we vote in the next general election, we must vote for equity. We must vote for Kamla Passad Bissessa. Raise your fingers for Sabak in the office. In good faith, in good faith, I advise Dylan that the SSA Act did not make provision for an interim director. Well, just as they fired the 5,000 workers from Petrotrin, they fired me. In an effort to help him, I still wanted to help the guy, you know. In an effort to help him, to educate him, I took this matter to the court. The court opined that Dylan could read, but he can't understand. Being a former soldier, I myself, I felt ashamed. Ashamed of Dylan's tenure as national security, as minister of national security, which was a total disaster. The murder rate went up. The detection rate went down. Why Dylan keep mumbling and fumbling about the security apparatus, security apparatus, security architecture? Do you remember that? He lost his way eventually, and you know what happened? He'd roll eventually at a fire him from the ministry. As a former soldier, you can imagine how I feel. Seeing a soldier feel so spectacularly. Well, I want to tell Dylan, and I mean soldier to soldier, you will be going down as the worst Minister of National Security in the history of Trinidad and Tobago. But he's not alone. He is not alone. During my tenure in the intelligence agency, I served under different head of national security. The old Silver Fox, do you remember him? Mr. Basdev Pandey. What a bright and intelligent man. Mr. Patrick Manning, I served under him. He was a diplomat. He was a man with class and the caring Kamla Passad Bissessa and his team lady, full of ideas, willing to listen and work with national security. Then come that arrogant Rowley. I served under him for a little under four months, and I can tell you, he is the worst head of national security council ever. He is the only head who knows nothing. He wants to know nothing. He doesn't know one thing. He didn't know that email gate was fake. He said he didn't know who gave him email gate. He said he didn't know that Stuart Young Ministry was investigating Marlene. He said he didn't know that Stuart Young Police Service was planning to lock up Marlene. He said he didn't know nothing. Well, I know. I know that he is going down as the worst, the worst Prime Minister ever in Trinidad and Tobago. But opposite, oh, do not be dismayed. Do not be dismayed, because I am here this evening to bring hope, hope to the nation. I am here to tell you 
that there are many solutions to the runaway crime problem that is currently plaguing our country. I am here to introduce you to one anti-crime solution that we created, which will significantly reduce the crime rate, decrease the fear of crime, and ultimately reduce, increase the detection rate and make you the citizen of Trinidad and Tobago feel safe again. Ladies and gentlemen, I take pleasure in introducing you to the VIPO Anti-Crime Initiative. VIPO is the acronym for Virtual Police Officer. We all know that it is impossible for police officers to be everywhere. However, with the implementation of VIPO, that is not possible. You see, VIPO makes every citizen in Trinidad and Tobago who could use a cellular phone a police officer, albeit a virtual police officer. I will not drill down to the details of how this works at this time. I may not have the time, but trust me, it is very technical. I will, you, I will only give you an overview, right? The foundation of VIPO rests upon a powerful software, highly sophisticated, that operates in cyberspace. And it's allow you to pass information on crime without being detected. Two, actually allow you to investigate and solve crime online using your cell phone, your laptop, iPad, anywhere, in a maxi at your home, anywhere. It will allow you to remain at home and report an offense against you without having to go to the police station. It will allow you to protect yourself, and listen to me, to protect yourself from, prote from, from potential criminal action. Yes, that VIPO software will actually allow you to deter crime with the use of your cellular phone. Let me tell you this. I can hear all you thinking, you know, and saying, where do you want to get this madman, boy? Well, let me tell you. My computer expert and I, we were invited to Silicon Valley, California in the USA, to present on VIPO. If you are not aware, Silicon Valley is the birthplace of the microprocessor. The company that invited us is a reputable company, and they, they are the ones who build 80% of the intelligence software for the British intelligence agency. We presented VIPO to them, and you know what I say? Let us begin to build that software. So let me tell you, I want to introduce you to VIPO Guardian Angel. Now think of a diary, your ordinary book. Now think of an electronic diary, something similar to your email, where you can leave information, messages, anything you want, but you would not be able to send it. You see, Guardian Angel is designed to provide leads for the police only when something happened to you. Now imagine a young lady traveling from Digo Martin to Port of Spain one o'clock in the morning. She get on her phone, dial into her VIPO account and say, VIPO, Guardian Angel, I am in Digo and I'm traveling from Digo Martin to Port of Spain. That information will be saved on the cloud. She stop a taxi, take a picture of the taxi with the registration number. That information, that picture goes to the cloud. She goes into the taxi, take a picture of the driver. That information goes into the cloud and it is not stored on the phone. More than that, she said, Viper Guardian Angel, track my phone. Anywhere that phone goes, that software will track it and save it in the cloud. If anything should happen to that young lady, the police can now, the police can now apply to Viper just as they would apply to Google to get that information. That is lead. That is the lead that we want. If you're walking down a lonely road, you're walking down a lonely road, just turn your camera on with VIPO, turn your camera on, right? And that, that entire video stream would stream straight to the VIPO cloud. So anybody coming to attack you, you know what's gonna happen? We have that information. L ladies and gentlemen, that particular feature allows you to use a cellular phone to protect yourself. Right, I'm looking at my time. There's another feature called City Alert. City Alert is designed to protect the cities from robbery. If a robbery is going on, all you do is get on the phone and you call Viper. Viper will send out immediately a text to all the phones in the area to include the banded phone. Imagine you put on a robbery and you get a text that a robbery going on. You know what's going to happen now? Because you are a virtual police officer, everybody phones up and waiting on them. How are they going to try to escape? They only, they not only have to escape from the police, you know, but they have to escape from everybody. And that is the technology that this UNC, this UNC 
has in the making. But before I go, ladies and gentlemen, before I go, I want to make a call. I want to make a call to all the PNM that I had. And I want to ask them to listen to their leader. As soon as Keith Rowley got into power, he told them, wean yourself from the government. I want to tell them to listen to him. You know what the word mean, wean means? When I check my dictionary at home, something might be wrong with my dictionary. It means, hold your tail. Go from here. Move. I want them to listen to him. And you know what I want this evening? I want us to stand and call these people home with me. Raise their voices as I tell them, win from the PNM and lean on the UNC. Win from the PNM and lean on the UNC. Win and lean. Win and lean. Thank you so much, Opus.